Summer's End. That's what we called the house. None of us knew why. One of those names handed down by generations of children over the years. I suppose everywhere is a house like it. A house with more rumours than facts. It scared us. The lane it was on was the quickest route to school, but on sunny days we'd take the longer route along the main road, though our parents told us not to. On rainy days we'd run past it, our fear disguised as a pretense for a race. And there was five of us, our little gang. Myself, my little sister Sarah, she was younger than the rest of us by two years, but one of us by parental insistence. At first, at least. John, my best friend. And he is dead now. Killed when his car overturned on a, the main road we weren't supposed to walk along. He had been drinking. Henry, <laughs> short and fat, always bringing up the rear, but always the first of the dirty jokes and his twin sister, Marion. Oh, she was completely different. At nine, she was the tallest of us by six inches. By 11, when our gang went its separate ways to separate schools, she had a foot on me. It was the summer we were nine when it happened. I was walking home alone. Sarah and Marion had a hockey game at some other school. John was at the dentist. Henry... <laughs> Henry was probably in detention. I had my book open. I was trying to get to the end of it by the time I got home. I was distracted. And without realising, I'd automatically taken the short way home. I looked up. And I was outside Summer's End. I stood there, staring transfixed by this house. I don't know why I did what I did next. I stepped towards the gate. Its green paint was flaking off. Beyond it was a mass of weeds, unkept bushes, and one massive oak tree. The house beyond was pebble-dashed and dilapidated. Its window frames match the gate in both colour and flakiness, surrounding broken glass. As I reached the gate, I raised my head and I looked up to the second floor. And that's when I saw her. A girl, about my age. She looked at me, she smiled, she raised her hand and she waved. I ran, I dropped my book and ran. I got home and hid in my room. A few hours later, my father knocked on my bedroom door and came in. He sat on the end of my bed. Isn't this yours? He held a book out to me. I found it in the lane. He paused. It was as if to find a way to say what he was about to say. You saw her, didn't you? The girl. I nodded. He smiled. Don't worry. She's quite friendly. Then he ruffled my hair and left. We didn't speak about it after that. He died that September. And I remember my first thought before the grief hit me was that he would never tell me what he meant. As we walked past Summer's End to the church for the funeral, there was a tiny black bow 
tied to the gate. 